I don't have rules. No, I, I sort of feel my way through it like a song. Um, but the main thing is it, it needs to make sense. So much of the television that we watch now is kind of, um, I call it haiku, which is to say the audience sort of sits back and, and, and we present some scenes. And a lot of the scenes are very familiar. So that the, the, the sort of compact between the audience and the show is, well, you know what this is. Yeah. We don't have to do a lot of detail because you know what this is. And I, I'm just not comfortable with that. I want, you, I, want you, I want your eyeballs glued to the set. I want you to feel things. I want you to get annoyed. I want you to laugh. I want you to be moved. That doesn't always happen, but that's, that's what we aspire to. Well, that's such a strange thing that you bring up, and I, I don't know if we should hold on to it too long, but I'm fascinated by this idea, and it's something that I've always noticed, which is that, yes, we are in this sort of post-post-modern age of television watching where everything has sort of kind of been done and is referential to something that we know has been done. So it's like you said, people can just kind of be like, oh, I don't really need to, I can have it on in the background and essentially know what part of the show I'm in right now, which I'd imagine is like sort of trying to break through white noise as a television writer. Right, and, and I think from a, from a business point of view, certainly networks are content with that because they don't care if you're an active participant or a passive participant as long as it's, it's on and your, your eyes are vaguely in the same room, uh, we can charge advertisers for that. But, we but used a, to be able to kick up the volume on the advertisers <laughs> as well. Exactly, but as a storyteller, I, I'm way too big an egomaniac to just allow the stuff to wash over people. So I try, and, and the cool thing about Michael, and Michael and I have only been working together since last March, um, but the cool thing about it is I think we both have the same goals. We both really want to really want to entertain people in a, you know, a vigorous way for 42 minutes if we can. Right. And a lot of that comes from flaws. A lot of that comes from not creating this perfect Easter Island statue in a suit who's this um, impenetrable, always right, always winning, um, you know, superhuman. Uh, when I was doing NCIS, one of the great things that I learned and, and was a total joy to me with the character that I played there was um, I could ad lib. Don Belisario let me ad lib because he saw, at first he wouldn't, and he would scream and yell at me. But um, I was ad libbing because I felt just like what you're saying. I felt that there everything was a trope and everything was so expected and everyone knew what everyone was going to say. And I just wanted to blow that up. So Even the most minor way just to feel it. I bet. So if somebody had a paragraph that was gobbledygook, that was taken straight from the, the script, you know, treatment and just put into dialogue, but it was prose. It wasn't, nobody thought about how a human being would say it. That was somebody memorized it and then said it. And I would say, wow, you said that almost like you memorized it. And, uh, you know, when you ad lib that to another actor inside a scene, you don't become popular, I will tell you. Um, but How Sean. How many actors did you have? Like, you'd say, oh, fuck you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Murray, Cody DePablo, Sasha Alexander, and Mark Harmon, most notably. Um, you know, I was goofing around on uh, one of the early episodes, and in the middle of the scene, he just hit the back of my head and gave me a slap. Uh, which I did deserve. I mean, human resources would argue that uh, maybe there was, you know, it was inappropriate, but this was the early 2000s. You could still get away with it. Uh, that head slap became part of the show for almost a decade there, you know, and it was, uh, that was like a screwball uh, element inside the show. Now, I, the difference for me now is inside Bull, I don't change a word. I say everything this man writes because I find part of the way my brain works is I'm a uh, lateral thinking person. So I, everything becomes synonyms and everything becomes this relative of something else. And, and I find these like sporadic correlations, boom. And it happens to me and I, and I improv, but he's already done that writing it. He's already had all those thoughts that I would have about how commonplace the thing I'm saying is. So thank you for doing all that work beforehand. <laughs> so now I just have to memorize it, and it makes my job a lot easier. I still look tired, though. I don't know why that is. I'm working on it. I'll try and exercise more. Could you, would you? And drink less. Um. No, I won't. <laughs>